Welcome to Psychic Evolution with evidential psychic medium, Jamie Clark, and spiritual coach and healer, Maggie Clark. And these abilities are so natural, they're supernatural. So we have a question, Dr. Bill, even before we start, um, do you need any more people for his study research? And I'm going to say absolutely. That's part of what we're here for. Well, I, I had I had one question myself before we get started. And, sure. and I had kind of, I, I really don't know, the group is developing their psychic abilities there. Are they? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's... Psychic and mediumship gifts. Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, so what, you're going to be a perfect addition with this connection, man. Let's get them to click that point, open that doorway of consciousness, because apparently with some of the reactions and your firsthand experience, you automatically started tuning into your natural abilities and using them very effectively, apparently. As this is an ongoing scientific experiment that we will just continue to be putting out into the world. And this is one of the, the ways we are going to do this. So excellent. Okay. So a little bit about Dr. Bill. Oh, okay. I'm uh, uh, Dr. William R. Schroeder, uh, DO MCDB, which is my, my letters. You can call me Dr. Bill or doc. Uh, I feel much more comfortable with that. Uh, I am a, Osteopathic internal medicine physician and integrative physician. I graduated from the University of Arizona School of Medicine's associate program in integrative medicine. And uh, I'm also uh, an energy healer and made a transition about 21 years ago into that role and currently incorporate energy, energy healing into my daily practice. I typically do uh, three to five sessions using uh, energy medicine a day with my patients and i've been doing that for almost that entire time uh, at that at that frequency and have had wonderful results um i also have had some experiences that i think you as you develop or as you are which i think is really what's going on your uh psychic and mediumship abilities that you may appreciate Hopefully, we will be able to enhance that and also give you an experience that is typical for my patients when I do a particular method um, that will, I think, very, uh, very much enhance it. That's, that, I think, is that for you is the major experience, and we want to record this and see if we are actually doing that. The second part of the experience is that whether we can take people into altered states of consciousness, which are really not altered, but they appear altered to the ordinary mind through this medium, uh, through electronic medium, uh, through voice. Uh, this type of technique appears to uh, be in some type of quantum reality uh, because it transcends time and space, it appears to be simultaneous and does not diminish with space or time. Uh, so it appears to be just as powerful at a couple thousand miles as it is at, you know, touching distance. So that was a bit of a surprise for me. Uh, I don't know how much you want me to introduce as we go along, but uh, prior to this experience of learning energy medicine uh, during an experiment itself, this is actually part of an ongoing experiment, uh, 20 years old, and if you really want to count it, maybe five, 10,000 years old, you want to count all the experimenters that came before that. Um, and what happened was that I was uh, signed up for an experiment at the Human Bioenergetics Laboratory at the University of uh, Arizona Medical School, Tucson campus, with about 47 other individuals where we were taught how to, quote, run energy take energy out of the environment and emit it out our palms. And we were tested to see if we could do that and whether we could detect it coming from another person's palm in a statistical manner. I was taught in between the baseline and test um, sessions by a uh, 
renowned energy healer by the name of Rosalind Brie, uh, and have studied with her for about 20 years. And this evolved. I, I learned the basic technique that I think we'll actually do tonight, because I think if we can find out if you enter the altered state of consciousness like I did the first time I did that very simple technique, it will give us some pretty interesting information. But I learned this in 15 minutes. Two days later, I was back in my clinic, a patient with profound orthopedic problems that were that was very, very dangerous. They, they, uh, they couldn't walk because of a knee restriction after surgery, um, and they had diabetes, hypertension. They were going to die. Uh, I was convinced of it. Within two minutes, that knee restriction and pain was relieved, much to my shock and surprise, uh, because I was very much a concrete materialist, reductionist person, molecular biologist, physicians tend to be that way. And this was a real eye opener. So that technique we'll participate in tonight. And then we'll do another technique that I like to call the gold technique. Uh, not because I know what that precisely means, but my teacher sees human energy and other forms of energy. And she describes the emission of this energy out the palms as a golden color. And you, you emit it directly into the central nervous system. That is what I'm going to be doing with you all tonight uh, at a distance. So I'm going to be performing that gold technique. You're going to be experiencing it and uh, seeing if that takes you into the altered state of consciousness that my patients experience. The kind of secondary thing is to see if that enhances any of your psychic abilities. So I urge you, once you reach that state, is to see if you have noticed anything on the psychic level. Um, you know, I don't know what your skill sets are, but if you find yourself having a psychic experience, we definitely want to record that. And uh, so that's kind of a brief introduction about what we're when I. Uh, who I am, uh, and what we're going to do. Excellent. So basically, we're going to give Dr. Bill the floor tonight, and he's going to do these two exercises with you. One is specifically to learn how to heal. And if you've never read Rosalind Breer's book, Wheels of Light, I highly encourage it as a must read. And I'll put a link in an email for you guys so that you can find that easily on Amazon. And so Dr. Bill was lucky enough to study with her for 20 years, and she is one of the best renowned healers that I and my mentor really respected for her talent. So very, very, very good. But be open because it sometimes is a slow roll into it. You may not get a major shift immediately this evening. Be open and let it integrate on the day to day because that can certainly be that tipping point of consciousness. And from what's been shared, there's a lot of potentials why we wanted to have him on. If we can give you different tools and techniques, different ways of working with this, you'll find your own way brilliantly. So we're really excited. Does anyone have any questions or things before we start? You have a question, Jennifer? Yes, thanks. Um, I uh, hope this would pertain to many different afflictions. For instance, I have stenosis and degenerated discs, and so mine is bone. And uh, so I apply this. It doesn't matter. It could be mental, spiritual, emotional, physical, Correct. Yeah, okay. you know, what I would address, and this this is something I forgot to mention. Uh, the first time I used <clears throat> this particular technique, I didn't know it was a technique or what I was doing. The person that I was working with had severe pain and anxiety, which disappeared instantaneously. I've replicated that. You know, I'm a scientist. You always want to replicate an experience. So you make sure it's not a hallucination or a one-time event. So we re replicated that. And if... If, with your permission, Jen, uh, if you notice your pain may disappear when you achieve the deep state of consciousness that we're going to go for. Uh, and if it doesn't, I will be happy to move into that area because you can move into any area once you're connected up and see if we can get that pain to relieve. What happens with my patients is 
once they understand what it feels like to be in this state of consciousness, then they have control and they can go to that pain-free state. And that is what I'm hoping what you will experience as well. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. I'll allow it to take form in many different ways. And oh, great, Dr. Bill, I'll hand it over to you and get, get started with us. Okay, so at least one of you is already running energy in, in this group and just started. Has, has anybody just felt a sensation in their uh, calves or ankles? Okay, so somebody's running already. One of the things I will tell you is that I can detect what a person's energy field is doing at a great distance, and you can definitely easily do it up close. And this is a skill that you will want to cultivate. Um, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you what Rosalind taught me that first day down south of, uh, south of Tucson at this little ranch called Rex Ranch. She started with a visualization, and I hesitate to call it a visualization because it's not a visualization, it's an event. We all have energy fields, as you know, and one of those energy fields is participating in this, if not multiple ones, for sure one, because you can extend this energy field into the earth with this visualization, this command, this conscious intent. At the bottom of your feet, just behind the balls of your feet, is an intake chakra known as the bubbling spring chakra. It's a, kind of a medium size chakra about the size people say it's about the size of a half dollar that is where the energy is going to come in i want you to think of your feet as if they were on quicksand or mud and you know how when you stand on quicksand or mud your feet sink naturally into the ground now that's what's going to happen your feet are literally going to sink into the ground now, your physical feet won't go into the ground. If that happens, send me a video because we'll put it on YouTube. And But your energy field can be commanded to expand in any direction you want. Uh, and what your feet are going to be doing is they're going to be going into the energy field of the earth in a bigger way. And you're going to be enhancing the natural flow through that chakra. It's a nice intake chakra if you want to look at it that way. And as you go deeper and deeper, you may feel the sensation that could be familiar to you. Most of my patients feel it as a buzzy, tingly sensation, very pleasant, light sensation, something akin to a pleasant falling asleep, a lack of sensation with the replacement of a new sensation, that, in my opinion, is the increased flow of chi into your body up the channels that are in your legs. Most of you, I think, are experiencing that right now. Is that true? Just kind of nod your head. It's going to see most of you. Okay, great. Okay, so cool. What happens for most people is that this stops at the knees. Because the knees have tons of sensory. This is a physical sensory caused by a subtle energy that is difficult to visualize unless you're Rosalind or someone else who can see energy. Uh, most people can feel it. And as it goes to your knees, you notice something about this energy. It is either conscious or it is conscious of our direction. So as it hits the knees and you focus on it there, it goes, oh, you want me to stop at the knees? Okay, I'll stop at the knees. I don't know why you want me to stop at the knees, but okay, I'm at the knees. Uh, now what do you want to do? If you continue to pull that into your thighs and just think of your legs as giant tubes, like giant straws, and you make space for that sensation, you should be able to pull that energy deeper into your thighs. We're heading for a energy pump that is described in multiple cultures. Uh, some people call it the third chakra, second or third chakra in the Hindu culture. The Taoists call it the Dantian. It's a giant rotating beach ball in my mind, rotating forward towards the belly button. 
as it starts to go into your abdomen, you'll start to feel that warming in there. When you breathe, that ball expands. When you breathe out, it contracts and pumps. There you go. Some, several of you just went into the abdomen. Nod your head if you feel have just felt that into your abdomen. Okay, hang on a second. All right, I'm going to give you a little bit of push. And it feels like this. Okay, now are you guys noticing that I'm pushing energy? Okay, so you can push energy through the feet and kind of act as a surrogate. If you have a patient or client that you're working with, you can help them realize this flow. And I'm going to push a little progressively harder so that you can see that this can be ramped up. Now, some of you are really starting to feel it. If you're not feeling that, uh, shake your head. Do something to let me indicate. Okay, so you're all feeling it pretty much, right? Okay, perfect. In that belly, this is going to be also something that you want to feel. You can expand it with your breath or with your consciousness. Direct the energy there. Let it flow into that and just let it move. Water occupies space. It loves space. If you've ever been at the beach and you scrape out the sand and the water flows in, you'll have an idea what this flow represents. On a physical basis, it looks like the properties of water. And two of you just, two people just went over the top of their heads. Did you, who felt that? Did somebody feel that? Go, okay, so, all right, so, this is, this is interesting working in a larger group. So, okay, that is the next cycle that you'll hit. As you go into that beach ball, just suck it in there. I want you to, I want you guys to simultaneously go marine. When I say go marine, I want you to sink your feet down into the ground very powerfully as suction tubes and make space for that sensation and bring it into your belly like it was the most important thing on earth. Marines take the beach when Uncle Sam says, take the beach, perfect, nicely done. Keep going. Okay, now this is gonna circulate in a circle down between your legs, up over the top of your head and back down into this beach ball. Just kind of let it flow down between your legs, up your spine, over the top of your head, and back down the front of your body. This is a good time to take your hands and put them about three to four inches apart, palms facing, in a comfortable position because we're almost ready as you each continue to do the exact same thing more and more powerfully through that circuit, we're gonna go up through the heart chakra and down the arms into the palms. This is a good way to, to get the circuit flowing. Once it goes through that circuit, it's like opening up a faucet. You should feel it through the remainder of the body. If you have someone you love deeply, typically a pet is best, someone living, I want you to think of the unconditional love that you have for them and the love you have, they have for you. And I want you to just pull that into your heart. There you go, now we're getting somewhere. And down your arms, in the center of your palms is another chakra called the Lao Gong point. It's emitting back and forth, typically for most people, right to left, left to right. And you should feel that. How many people are feeling that sensation? 
You guys getting that? I think so. It looks like it. All right. If you get Go Marine now, I want you to just go ahead and let it flow as much as possible. And I'll help. I'll push some energy for you. You'll actually feel something forming, like a ball, like a substance between your palms. One of the things you can do is you can turn it over like this, and you can actually feel some of the physical properties of chi as it goes out. It feels like a weight, like an actual weight. So now I'm running chi like a marine right now. I don't know if anybody you can, it's, it'd be interesting to see if anybody can pick that up. Sometimes people can see it. You can actually see the flow. I'll go back and forth and see if you can pick it up. Anyway, doesn't matter. You don't have to see it. It's important to feel it. Because right now, as your body's filled with chi, you're opening a bellows. That bellows is the human energy field. It's like a balloon. The more chi you run into it, the larger it gets. It has a boundary, we think, that people can see it or feel it, but it's really quite immense. The bigger this balloon gets, which is like a bellows, the more your third eye opens. I think the energy field surrounding the body is at least a component, if not the third eye itself. So in just a second, I'm going to go from... My current state of consciousness, which is attached to my brain and five senses, and the fight or flight response. In the fight or flight response, our energy fields are collapsed and close to our bodies. Close for fighting, small for flighting. Because if the energy field of a tiger, for instance, a predator comes near, you want to be able to punch it and detect its presence up close for fighting and you want to be small in case you get away so it won't see you go behind a tree because it'll be able to see your energy field just like it with its energy field eyes it can see your body with its third eye it can see your energy field so it's useful to collapse your energy field we'll call this the ordinary mind And it occupies a particular state of mind. We're about to enter. It occupies kind of a place, if you will, which we'll call the physical plane. In just a second, I'm going to go from the collapsed protector, fight or flight state, into the superconscious mind, expanded energy field state, detector state. Does you very little good to have a protector if you don't have a detector. So what's happening to you right now, unbeknownst to you, is that your field is going back and forth between protector and detector states at such a rate that I can't detect it. If you go into that superconscious mind detector state long enough and deep enough, I'll be able to feel your field rapidly oscillating back and forth so in just a second, we'll do the, the, the big experiment that I want to do today. And I will go into that state. And hopefully you will feel the transition. I should notice that as a wave of energy coming from you across my field. And it feels like this. There you go. Okay, I'm in. Okay, several people just followed me. Okay, you should feel a different sensation altogether. How many people felt kind of a total body warmth or a total body sensation? Okay, that is your field expanding, sucking chi in, which is that familiar sensation coming from your feet. Now, if you're so inclined, you can suck as much chi as you want. Not that you guys suck but I would recommend it. Go ahead and 
suck as much chi into your field as humanly possible. There you go. Now you're feeling it a lot better, that warm sensation. The second thing you may be feeling is an increased sense of peace or bliss. I want you to detect that. Just kind of look at it a little bit. Examine it for a second. Most people feel extremely comfortable. Their anxiety disappears in this state because now you're in the superconscious mind. And the superconscious mind has expanded. Recognize that there's no predator unless some of you have a tiger in your house. It recognizes that everything's cool and it stays expanded more often in detector mode. You're still going back to protector mode or otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear my voice. Because that's associated with the five senses in the brain. You're going back and forth, back and forth. Detector, detector, protector, detector, protector, detector. How many people are feeling like they're levitating? Okay. This, yeah, yeah this, is, this is my favorite part. And if you can identify this sensation of lightness to your body, you're actually entering another state of consciousness that I had to name beyond Delta. I've been withholding that because I want you to experience it. Now, most people will go there because they're going into the universal mind and expanding their third eye into that giant field of consciousness all the time too. So you're experiencing at least three states of consciousness simultaneously, going back and forth between them. I have a little bit of trouble explaining this because this is where I, as a religious person, believe God resides. It's the universal, the whole, the big kahuna. All of the information is out there. In just a second, I'm going to go as deep as I can into beyond Delta, and you guys should feel a real sense of levitation. It feels like this. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. You should all be pretty floaty right now. Pain free. Anxiety free. Is that true, Jen? Did the pain did you have pain in your neck when we started? You have a problem with the upper part of your neck or something? Okay, so are you in pain right now as we speak? No. Did the, were you in pain when we started? No. Oh, okay. All right, because I, was, I wasn't hoping you, for you to have pain, but um, do you have pain anywhere in your body? Did some pain disappear when we went into this state? Ir irritation, yes. And where was that? It's my cervical spine that around the rhomboid area is caused from the cervical. And is that painful right now or did it go away? Right now, there's no pain. I had okay. irritation, yeah. Okay, so you may want to experiment with this if you have a pain or dysfunctional part of your body because the extra chi going in heals on one level it's like a nutrient so you get this flow of chi and it will nutrify various organs of the body chi is like water it goes where it's not so if you have low flow somewhere it increases the blood flow and decreases the pain sensation in on another level because you're in the superconscious mind the body is less necessary to perception. And so your pain impulses kind of naturally disappear. The first time I did this and went marine on somebody, 
it was a patient with fibromyalgia and anxiety. And bam, when I went in, so did they. I started floating. I was all warm all over. I felt very peaceful. And they were laying on a table. I had my hand on top of their head. And they tried to sit up to tell me that their pain and anxiety had completely disappeared and they were floating off the table. And I didn't know what was happening. And so six months later, I go to Rosalind, my teacher. And I go, Rosalind, what is the deal? And she says, oh, that's just the biggest aura winds effect. Like, I should already know this, right? Like, it was, you know, I'm part of the manual. And you can see that if you spend a little time in this, you stay in this state. And I think you guys are all pretty much sticking with it. So for you, this group, it's going to be interesting. I want you to see if you have any improvement in any psychic skill that you can use right now. I want you to keep expanded, keep in that beyond Delta state, and see if your third eye is going to assist you in any psychic exercise that you can perform tonight. Okay, so now I think that you guys are excellent compared to my patients at staying in this state. I think your training has uh, going to serve you well in remaining. What I want you to do is I want you to record and remember the body sensations, the mental emotion sensations, whatever they are, and the sense of levitation or lightness to your body. Because if you can reproduce those sensations, any of them, but especially the floaty sensation, your body will naturally expand long enough to detect either no tiger in the room or the presence of the universal. And it'll go, cool, I have arrived. If you can remain there, my experience is that you get information from the third eye and as you bounce back down to good old standard consciousness, brain, and five senses, you can carry it back with you. When I first did this technique, which was actually in uh, at that ranch south of Tucson, I became psychic for about two to three months, and I had no idea what was going on. I, I had what I would call intuitive flashes. I knew what people were going to be, what they were saying, who they were, I mean, who they were with, things like that, just wild stuff. And um, I'm not exactly a very good medium. Later, I had experiences where I contacted disembodied beings of various sorts, including some patients who had passed. It was very interesting. And I, and I think that you can use this expansive technique to enhance your psychic abilities. We actually did pretty good. We did this in 35 minutes, which usually takes a lot longer. So, um, so this, I want you guys to remain as long as you can. You're going to be going back and forth. Re recognize that. <clears throat> and if you have a negative thought or feeling, you want to turn this off, feel too floaty, feel too good, feel too warm, don't like it have a negative feeling or thought that will serve as a thought tiger to your superconscious mind. And it'll go, the superconscious mind will go, well, that's not real. That's just a thought. Well, your ordinary mind will go, oh my God, there's a tiger in the room. It just told me that there's a tiger in the room and your field will collapse. The flow of energy will diminish and it'll be harder to maintain your bellows open in this third eye state. This is why people have, um, I would call it very rapid intuitive stuff when they're about to get crushed by a rock, looking, you know, that they can see the rock coming when they're before the rock is on top of them. I think it's a really interesting thing. And I want you to experiment with that and let me know what your thoughts are. So I'm going to stop talking and see if you guys remain. You're doing a pretty good job.
and see if anybody wants to ask a question. I think you guys are enjoying this too much. I'm not sure. I am. I always enjoy it. It's my favorite thing to do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, Dr. Bill, you're bringing up an interesting point as you were taking us through the visual. You were talking about the chakras and the hands and the feet. And Chi, my master guide, was sharing that very same fact a, a while ago. So it's kind of nice that in your practical dynamics, you're saying the very same stuff that he is. I'm like, oh, and it goes way beyond that. But kind of a nice validation that hands, feet, energy field, over soul shock, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, we could do another one. Okay, so I'm open. Yeah, yeah I'm going to yeah. read a, let me read a couple of comments to you. I had pain okay. in my upper neck when started and now it's gone. So fantastic Excellent. for that. And when you pushed, I felt a wave through the body, then emotional release and the body felt light. And so as you're experiencing this, ladies and gentlemen, in train, how it feels, feel this very vibe. So you can recall it at any time. And someone's like, I feel like I'm floating right now. This is hard to even type. Yeah. yeah. You're doing great, man. And again, just allowing it to integrate because it's not always instantaneous. Of course, there'll be things that happen now, but as you're moving along in your day-to-day, -day, be open. Now, Dr. Bill, what are you feeling in your body after running energy and giving, you know, talking us through that and lecturing and helping us go through the process? What do you feel right now in your body? Well, I know that I can tell that I'm flickering. So as I talk to you, I'm back in my ordinary mind. And I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I can sample this as an intermittent wave. And if you get close enough to somebody who is slowed down enough and is beyond in beyond Delta, you can feel the wave come back and forth across your body. It's really quite fascinating because they're going back and forth between expanded field, collapsed field, expanded detector, protector, detector, protector. And if they go really deep, their field will slow down enough that you feel like you're in uh, a big bubble and there's not any movement. Your thoughts will slow down to the point where they will, you'll start to feel the gaps between them and eventually they'll stop. And then you'll be in a place where your five senses are not being accessed. You're in a position as a perceiver where you're no longer in your ordinary mind and it looks big and it looks like there's nothing there. I mean, nothing, nada. You can't hear anything. You can't see anything. Well, what happens is usually people startle and they go back to the ordinary mind and they go, what the heck was that? And so it's it. they start flickering again. And then if they go, oh, I really want to go back there, they go back, they slow down. If you can practice this, you can hit healing level number three which is if you can deliver con conscious intent, a command while you're in that deep state, and it's kind of like going by a mailbox at a, in a car at hundred miles an hour, you're trying to toss a letter into the mailbox because you're going to be right back out of there right away. If you can hit it, then the real, the other stuff makes sense to me. This one is magic. It's metaphysical. It is paranormal. Things change. So if you do this repetitively and you've got a prayer or command and intent, whatever in there, then people's bodies really change and they heal in ways that there is absolutely no Western medical phys explanation, physical explanation that I can come up with. And, and, and you go, oh my gosh, what happened? You're, you, went, you went away. See, what happened when I first did this? I went into that state and I didn't startle because I didn't know what it was. So that first patient I treated, I was actually in Beyond Delta and had no idea, which is a good thing. Because if you have an idea, guess where you are? You're in the ordinary mind. You could reliably count upon it. This is why people who can silence their internal thoughts make some really good healers and psychics. 
because they don't have to go back there, lose the information that's constantly flowing. It's kind of like uh, how many people uh, have been in a car uh, driving along and heard a distant radio station and it's, you know, you can't quite hear it. And then you get up on the top of the hill and you hear it better and you go down a valley, you don't hear it as well. That's what this looks like from the outside. You're picking up information and it may only be a few words while you're on the crest of the hill. Well, the idea is to stay on the crest of the hill, stay in beyond Delta as long as possible. Most of us have now gone back into level two and are not quite as floaty. That's cool. And you know how I can tell? Because you're flickering more. Your fields are going back quicker and quicker. It's like a strobe. I don't know if you've ever have seen a strobe. You turn it all the way up and it looks like it's on constantly. If you slow it down, then you can see the flickering. That's what I'm kind of talking about. So it's yeah, a fairly mechanical event. I really want you guys to comment. I'm so curious. Yeah, um, we also have another comment. I have fibromyalgia. I saw a purple bright ball and floating, not pain. Excellent. Very nice. And uh, here's another one. Before we started, I had a heaviness in my third eye. Now it feels lighter, but still have a slight pressure there. Really? Oh, oh, I know what I got to do. I got to do before. Do it. Work it yeah, go me. for it. Okay. So Rosalind. So I meet Rosalind, you know, over a weekend in a group. And part of the group of physicians that she taught there met in Southern Colorado in a place called Pagosa Springs the next summer. And she showed us stuff that it was just out of this world, just astonishing stuff. And she said, well, I'm going to do a series of initiations for you. So she did an initiation, which is kind of an entry to a mystery stool kind of thing that she was um, helping us with. And she said, oh, yeah, you really need to be baptized by fire. Well, here I am a Christian. Okay, so I, I'm going... No, I've been baptized by water, baptized them by fire. I had no idea what it was because I'm not in that group of people who understand that. I thought, oh, you know, that's like getting shot at. You know, you undergo a baptism by fire. And so she had me stand on this step in this basement and she put her hand on my forehead, right smack dab on my forehead. And I would say within two to three seconds, I was in that floaty sensation the point where I didn't know where I was and I almost fell over the other people there had to support me because I lost control of my motor. Uh, I was just kind of sitting there floating. I didn't know what to do with my legs. So we go up, it's time for lunch right after this. I go upstairs and I'm sitting across from Rosalind and I am in bliss. I want to take my clothes off and run through the forest. I mean, it is, I am with everything. It is just crazy lunatic stuff. I didn't know what to make of it. And she says, she says, you're not finished yet. So she told me to take my right foot where that chakra is, the bubbling spring chakra, and connect it to my third eye. And I had a vague idea where the third eye was. I mean, I, you know, they pointed it out in the didactic material at the medical school. Well, I did that. I mean, um, it's just, it. one of the things that was nice for me was I was so stupid. I didn't, you know, I had no concept. I just, okay, I'll put my, you know, all of my foot on my third eye, you know, whatever. Bam. I, the entire room started to heat up. Energy went through my body and out the top of my head. And I didn't um, know exactly what to do. I suggest that this is a good way to open the third eye. Because again, after that, I went through a period where I was extremely psychic. And very, very happy. So it was kind of like you got the bonus round to, you know, and I was a reluctant psychic. I didn't want to be psychic. I had no interest in, you know, that at all. I wanted to be a healer. I said, I, I, I got patients back home who are sick, you know. So I don't know if we want to do that, but I think that might be an interesting follow up experiment. Let's see, we've got time to do it too, I think. So. I can't hear you. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> I muted myself. You're not here, nothing. Yeah, let us, um, I have a couple more things just to share with you and then let's do that. Um, someone's lower back pain is completely gone, which is Excellent. awesome. Excellent. Um, and someone jumped in late, but um, her neck discomfort has lightened up. 
Um, we do have a question. Um, Jen rarely has severe pain unless she lifts something something heavy. She's the one with um, the stenosis. And what she tries to do is find a way to heal. She wants to heal the cervical stenosis before surgery is needed at some point in the future. Um, she doesn't live with pain daily, but can this method actually heal bones, tissue, et cetera, or is it meant for just pain relief? Well, but I think it does, but it takes, the tissue healing takes a lot more time and you have to spend more time. You have to remain in the altered state of consciousness longer to achieve better chi flow, to get that, get rid of the, the stress response. And what you do is you go marine on it, but you go to your neck. So you just direct the energy right where the pain is. And as you're doing that, if the pain disappears, that's when I see tissue healing. Now, some of this is hard to confirm because you can't call up the insurance company and say, well, I just ran energy through your patient. Can you mind if I get another MI? you know, uh, you know, today to see what's, you know, happened, you know, in the last <laughs> few hours, you know, they're not into that kind of stuff, you know, um, we, we've had people where we've seen much more rapid healing than you would expect. Many of the orthopedic doctors that I have, they'll do surgery and the patient will come down, they'll have pain and I'll run chi into them or teach them how to run chi into themselves and their wounds will heal way fast. And so that it does work. I'm not exactly the, the, the last thing where you're in the beyond Delta and you deliver the thing that I've mostly experienced with clients that are not my patients um, that because it works better at a distance. Don't ask me why. I think it's because you're away from all the electronics. I think you can relax. You know, I, I, I really don't understand that, but uh, in the clinic, it's tough because the person is in fight or flight, and you got to pull them all the way to Delta. If they're at home, then they're not afraid. Go into any average doctor's office and see how afraid you feel. <laughs> I mean, really, think about it for a second. They are standing in the way of their own energetic healing and have zero idea that they're doing so. It's called the nocebo effect. And if somebody says something bad to you, you're not going to live, you're, this is going to be bad, that's going to be bad, just say no. Do not believe it because you just shot yourself in the foot because you won't be able to go into Beyond Delta and, do, and pull that off. You won't even be able to go into the superconscious mind because you'll be so afraid of that thought tiger that you'll be in the ordinary mind. This is a crucial piece of information. Uh, we are intact beings. We live in physical bodies, which get crushed. And, and what you have to realize at, at a position of the perceiver in the superconscious mind or beyond and beyond Delta, you cannot be assailed because you do not have a physical body. You know what I mean? That it just isn't, it really isn't there. Uh, so I, 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 I try to explain this to patients. You guys are a lot easier to do this, uh, with, I think, because you'll go, oh yeah, yeah, that, that's, I've been to the universal, you know, and they'll, they'll go, well, why did I get better? That's a question I get a lot. Why did I get better? And I say, I, first of all, say, I don't know, but would you like to stay better? And, you know, cause for a patient, they don't want the details. They just want, you know, half of them want a pill, you know, that they can take, you know, and, you know, so I get them into the deeper states. But you also bring up an interesting point, Dr. Bill, and that is with the work that I do, I'm multidimensional. I'm expanded out there. Plus, we got to be able to function decently if we're doing the mediumship or that kind of ability to yeah. communicate the information. So you bring up a very good point, and that is to be able to balance no matter where you are, just expand, but keep it relaxed, keep it aware. And then you can just walk those worlds nicely without going too crazy. Got to be able right. to fit that stuff in. So that's and excellent. It, and I think that it's kind of a, it's the position of the perceiver that decides what the information is. If I'm on one side of a tree, I see that side of the tree. 
if I am in the tree, psychologically, I feel the tree. If I feel all the trees on earth, I perceive all the trees on, you know, I mean, it's kind of like that more or less. It's not a very good, that's not a very good metaphor, but you see what I'm saying. I do. I agree with you that that they do. They communicate. It's all connected big time. So stay in the position of the perceiver that gives you the best shot at, at accomplishing your mediumship and healing. And you'll do everybody a big favor. Turns out that one of the things that you may have noticed is this group when we were all in beyond Delta, that there was kind of like a bubble like formation or something that was kind of, it's almost like a protective bubble. You know, it's like nothing, nothing bad can get in there. You know, it's people. And when you get really good at this, you can have negative thoughts and feelings or just regular thoughts and you don't leave beyond Delta because the brain is an illusion when it comes to the position of the perceiver. It's a filter. That's all it is. It, the brain does not create consciousness. Consciousness creates the brain as a filter for ex- existence on the physical plane. It's all it's useful for. And so what you end up doing is going to a kind of non-brain, kind of like if I only didn't have a brain, you know, if the scarecrow had sung that song, then, then I think, you know, uh, Dorothy would have been able to go home right away. Um, something like that. Anyway. Okay. You, is everyone up for another short little exercise with Dr. Bill? Yes. Let's do that. And then we'll do a few more questions at the end. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to focus on the balls of your feet. And I want you to pull that energy in just like you did before. you go just let it circulate and suck it up just a second we're going to go marine and into that expanded state you just want to make sure you got enough energy in your balloon to make it easy for you keep pulling it in there deeper and deeper into the ground Pull that sensation into your body. Okay, here we go. Okay, most of you, I think, went into beyond Delta. Is that true? Or you went into that deep state again? Is it because I went in, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, all right. So I want you to think of that energy coming in through your feet, going directly to a center right between your brow, your third eye. When I do this, it's like somebody put a woolen cap over the top of my head. You may feel a similar sensation or something moving in your forehead, a warming or something. For some reason, we're having a little bit of, I'm having a little bit of difficulty doing this. So hold on a sec. This is where I talk to people who are not physically filtered. You feel that you've kind of arrived at that space where you had some mediumship experiences? Enhance your sensations, body, emotion, floaty, whatever, as much as humanly possible and remain in that sensation. Become absorbed to it. Keep running that energy towards your third eye and absorb in whatever sensation you feel. Typically, when I do this, some very familiar friends show up for me. 
and hang out with me. Occasionally, they'll talk to me or give me information. If you want to go there very rapidly, just run energy and talk to them. They'll provide the bubble because they're already there. So what do you guys think? Felt amazing to me. I immediately went directly into my spiritual room, had many of my guides right with me. Yeah, they tend to show up when you start looking at them. Yeah. You know, I don't, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why, but they kind of go, oh, you, you want something? Okay, I'm right here. You're finally paying attention. Yeah. Yeah. Finally <laughs> listening to me. Finally, you know, don't, it's the old, uh, it's the old spirit guy going or angel going, don't make me come down there. Just like your parents did when you were a kid, you know? Yeah. Put in the comments, everybody. If you, oh, someone said awesome wave. Dad was get there holding nice. me. Beautiful. You'll go oh. multidimensional. You start nice. existing on multiple levels at once. And on the inside. The outside is like, hey, it's a beautiful day. On the inside, I'm like, hee, 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 <laughs> I'm on a ride, man. But finding that wave, that energy that's comfortable, that for me is what I've gotten used to. And to be able to run that energy through other areas really can help sensitize those different frequencies, those different channels. Someone connected with a friend of hers, cool. her parents, and her biological mom on the other side. Beautiful. Excellent. Again, that's mediumship. Yeah. Connection, direct Connection, connect. Direct All you need connect. to do, Boop. open that door of consciousness. Yeah. You've got it. It's excellent. Definitely floating on wave. Yeah. Um, the person that had the uh, pressure, a little pressure still in the third eye, the heavy feeling went to a slow pulse and it became a party of guides, galactic family members, and Archangel Raphael showed up, mm. which I love Archangel Raphael. Very cool. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Met my spirit owl, nice. Siam. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look nice at this. Word, guys. So I'm going to, oh my gosh, awesome feeling, incredible for a loved one. Saw, um, saw his father. Father wanted to send loving energy to him. Beautiful. Again, and train nice. how this feels. You could keep these connections. Yes. Always. Yeah. Re remember what you recorded so that you can reproduce it and re-enter the state and remain there. Yeah. It's a pirate thing. It's a bunch of R's. <laughs> R's. <laughs> 
And just so everybody knows, um, we are going to be sending out a survey tomorrow that we ask everyone to fill out if you have the m- a moment to do so. It just helps um, with Dr. Bill's research and to scientifically prove that it can be done through distance. Um, and then, of course, we are putting this on social media and out onto YouTube to see if it can be done at a distance at a later time as well to see if people can still have those same results. So once that's out, I'm going to encourage everyone to share it with your friends, your family, whoever's into this type of thing. Um, It can be very, very useful for anyone, obviously with pain, anxiety, or just who wants to just see what this is like to run energy as well and to experience different phases and different states of consciousness. But again, look, from this coming from Dr. Bill, is unifying on this web channel, all of us at the same time, right here, right now. There is no time, that linear time, not like this, but like that. You know, that's why I was like, oh, isn't it weird they can move it? It's it's an hour earlier. Is it really? Is it? (laughs) Or is it, you know, boop, that's how easy it is. Because I don't believe uh, in Arizona, at least we shift. I think we stay that way the whole time. Oh, isn't that eternal moment, man? So just kind of making that point that like you're doing, look, you're already in this state. You're already in this relaxed, receptive connection. The more that you get comfortable, more that you can entrain that, it's always on. And you'll be able to tap into that one because you're always in it. Two, but you'll be able to function. You'll be able to be on a day-to-day practical way, coherent enough to go, okay, this is great. Because it's really nice when you're using your abilities as we're all working with, but that you even more effectively, you're comfortable with them. You're learning even more about them. And some of these techniques will bring in some of your other talents that have been latent. They're there. All of them are there. It's what are we going to do to activate them? Let's get this going. And then someone felt um, pressure in the third eye, then a bright glow with blue around it. And it kept lighting. Uh, Didn't meet anyone, but lots of Lots of colors, which is awesome and energy. Someone sent long distance healing um, this way and sent Reiki to the East Coast. Uh, Amazing, right? In addition, for those colors, see if you get a feeling with it. What does purple feel like? What does blue feel like? What does green? Any of those get a vibration. Again, for me, I've got an insist, well, I'm always working on this stuff, but it will speak to you. All you have to do is listen. So if you're getting colors or whatever the case is, what does it feel? Is there some feeling? Is there information? Is it a vibe? Anything. Just get that communication moving. Beautiful. Good job, guys. Any other questions for Dr. Bill while we have him here? Thank you, Dr. Bill. Awesome. Oh, yeah. No, my pleasure. We'll have to do this again. It's cool. Yeah. I want Uh, you guys to notice if you can habituate. Because you've habituated to the physical plane after you came out of the womb. You habituated to the filter of the brain and the mind. I don't think you ever left the metaphysical. I think you just got used to a filter. And it's time, you know, to, you know, look at the whole picture again. And I think it's just a matter of time before you habituate to the metaphysical in the same way that you moved out of the metaphysical into the physical as you grew up. Oh. Beautiful. Anyways, that's my comment, my final comment on that. Little yeah, I love that. And then someone else felt um, a blue sapphire. Cool. In interesting that yeah. a number of those are blue. That's really cool. Very interesting. I like that. And someone says, that's the best meditation I've ever had. I usually have a very hard time relaxing. Maybe your voice and energy was what I needed. Thank you. And our numbers were all on the same yeah. page, all on the same vibe, baby. Yeah, beautiful. And then a tinging in my third area of my forehead, the pituitary gland and area around it, blinding white light. So many light bodies around me. Excellent. Beautiful. Yay. Look at all you guys going crazy fun. Remember, I record into my phone because I have my phone a lot more than a pen and paper. That way you don't have to worry. Most of us will usually have that. So if you're okay, quick date, time, quick experience, description. Let's build this up. Build that soul text, man. Thank you so much, Dr. Bill, for joining us this hey, evening. This right, was this fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. You guys are cool. You're really cool. You got yeah. cool we'll energy, that. kind of a high buzz thing. Totally. Yeah. And you're welcome to join us any second Monday of every month. If you choose to or want to, we'll put you on the email list. So you can always jump in and join us. 
we have a lot of fun here at Psychic Evolution, always exploring what we can get away with and what we can do. <laughs> Yeah. Someone's like, I could still feel the energy. I can't even move good. my feet. <laughs> yeah. Feels too good. <laughs> good. Yep. Awesome. That's exactly right. Beautiful. Well, I love it. With you, no matter where you go. <laughs> even though I don't know what I'm doing, I enjoyed that. It was easy to med meditate for me. Awesome, Elise. Yeah. And that's the best thing is you don't know what you're doing. You're out of your own way, man. That's brilliant. Perfect. Beautiful. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you guys so much. This was nice job, fantastic. Guys. And thank any other, you. Yeah. Any other questions for Dr. Bill before we release them to his evening? Okay. Okay. Beautiful. I, I, I do. <laughs> okay. Paulette, go for it. Um, I guess my question is like, can you, how can you, um, cause I suppose what the, what, um, what he did was like direct the energy, like, you know, saying, okay, let's go from your feet and then all the way up, like almost like guiding it. Is it like possible to, to, to yep. do it with other people too? Like oh, us yeah. with other people. Okay. Yeah, you, you can put it wherever you want. And it's, you could have put it in your left earlobe. If you had said energy, go to my left earlobe, it would have gone there. And how would you know that you would get the sensation there. And when the sensation, the sensation is kind of like the guide because the energy doesn't know where your earlobe is necessarily, but you do. Mm -hmm. And when you feel it going there, it's kind of like, I don't know if you ever played around when you were a kid with water and channels and digging out mud or, mm -hmm. you know, watching water in a river. It goes where there is space. Okay. So if you, make, if you make space in front of it, it will go right there. And when you know it arrives, you will feel that warming sensation. So I teach people that when they're, you know, having a rough time with a particular part of their body or organ, I'll just say, you know where it is. Here's a picture of it. Sometimes I'll show them a picture and I'll say, just run that warmth in there. And once they get that, then they start to see organ changes and i think it's because the blood flows better i mean i i, I may be being too materialistic about it mm -hmm. who knows you know but because that's what i'm hoping that they'll get good blood flow and good mojo into their organ <laughs> liver mojo or whatever you know and, and and but then i if i can get them to into beyond delta then they can really kick some butt because what will happen is that they can deliver i can pray for them I can deliver that, mm -hmm. but they've got all day and they know what they really want. The people around them that serve them, whoever those are, their guides, guardians, or whatever, know what they need. I'm guessing it's guesswork for me. So I'm kind of a little bit of a reluctant healer. I much prefer a patient to heal themselves mm -hmm. because they're going to get what they want. They're going to get what they need, not something that I think they want or need. I'm I'm kind of an outsider, a bit of a stranger in their world. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank we have you. another couple questions. Um, someone wants to know if they can book an appointment with you and if you're open to new patients. You betcha. There we go. Awesome. So that's a yes. We'll make sure you guys can get in contact with Dr. Bill. And then what are you doing when you push Dr. Bill? What internally are you doing to move that energy toward us? I don't know. It's kind of, it just kind of happens. What happened is see, most of my stuff comes out of pure, absolute abject desperation. You know, I got you know, somebody who's about to bite the dust in front of me and I got to do something. And I know my, you know, my pills may not work. My, the surgeon's given up. The, there's no radiotherapy for it. You know, and it's like, what are you going to do? Watch them suffer. Not too much fun. I can tell you that. And so I just, you know, what the most of the techniques that I did were like, okay, the hell with it. Even if it requires some crazy lunatic visualization, I'm going to go for it. So it's kind of like, like I say, go Marine. You just kind of go, okay, I don't care who, you know, who gets in the way I'm taking this turf and you go for it. Now, anger doesn't help very much. So it's more like, how would you call it? Um, just kind of like, I am going to will this to happen in a very peaceful way, in a very quiet way. And it happens. And, it, and I don't really know the technique. Then I come back to my ordinary mind and say, well, I ran energy through the ground into the bottoms balls of their feet. Well, did I? I have no idea. Because that's what my ordinary mind just told me. 
I may have, you know, for all I know, Bob the angel may have shown up and done it for me. I wouldn't know, you know, <laughs> you know, he'd have to tell me. And, you know, maybe he's going, the guy's too goofy to, to tell right now. I'll wait till he's, I'll wait till he's like, you know, older, more advanced or something. I don't know. You know, and taking that path of least resistance, it's exactly what water does. It just flows, man. And it's not the work. You don't make it. You allow it to happen. It's yeah, always on. Man. You just tune yeah. in. Yeah. You know, whatever we conceptualize is what we're going to experience with our ordinary mind. Yep. This is non-conceptual stuff. It opens the door of consciousness. Hello, yes. McFly. Yes. Hello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, Yeah. <laughs> I think everybody needs, everybody needs to know that intention already starts to move your energy. As soon as you have it, as soon as the thought is there, as soon as the intention's there, the energy is already in motion, you know? And so don't overthink it sometimes because when you're overthinking it, you're then again in that ordinary mind and you want to, you want to keep that spaciousness of that super consciousness and then the universal as well and the more that you can remain in that state without analyzing well what am i doing what's my intention you know practice practice doing it so it becomes like first nature or, or like it's you, like bowling if you you know you swing your arm back and you let go of the ball that ball is going to go where it going to go you have done your job you have finished the thing you are there and so it's, or riding a horse where you spur a horse, that horse will go where you spur it if he's trained at all. He'll go, oh, you want me to go over there? I'll go. The, the energy is the same way. It looks conscious. It really, really looks conscious, you know, or, or it's being directed by some conscious entity, either ourselves or somebody else to do what we in, have intended it to do. So, and I moved my arm. I just moved chi all over the damn place. Is that any different than the chi that I can't see? No. Yeah, beautiful. Any other questions, guys? We're good. Great job. Awesome. Thank Again, you we'll so send much, this out. Dr. Bill. Right. Thank you, okay. Dr. Bill. Very All right. done, man. Awesome. And then, of course, um, we're going to have this on the Mystery School. We're going to put it up on YouTube. We are going to put it on social media. And we will send out a survey tomorrow if you can just document what you experience. So it's in writing for Dr. Bill for when his book comes out. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> and, <laughs> and of course, um, when you get to... Um, it's going to be a job forum. When you get there, you do not have to put your name. You do not have to put your contact information. It can be completely anonymous. However you wish to share the information. It's all very, very valuable. So thank you guys so much. This is awesome. Yeah, thank you guys. I really appreciate your help. Yeah. We're in this together, man. Let's do this. That's right. We're going to change the world. Yeah. One, One supernova at a time, at a time man. <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody have a beautiful night we'll see you next next month second monday of the night and i'll see some of you in astrology class this wednesday so have fun guys <laughs>